Hey people, Britney's back. It's been overdue, and I apologise for that. Yeah, again. But I, I had to give myself a break from Mass Effect, okay guys? I was starting to hear voices in my head. Um, I have rallied for the finale now though, okay? Don't call it a comeback. This is my revised build for the Cabal Vanguard. And it is a build without biotic focus. <laughs> now, I know it sounds mad, but uh, let's take a look at what it actually has got, okay? For Poison Strike, you still want range for your first evolution, okay, guys? That 40% increase is going to be vital for how we're fully building uh, Poison Strike now. Uh, for your fifth evolution, get the Poison Duration, okay? This is really going to uh, stack up the uh, damage over time you can do with this power. You really don't need the recharge speed, because I just don't recommend being that heavy with Poison Strike, okay, guys? And then, um, for your sixth evolution... now. If you've gone this far into Poison Strike, you're in it for the damage, okay? Poison Strength is an obvious uh, damage boost, okay? But Double Dash is a second strike within the same cooldown, okay? Essentially, what your choice is here is a 50% increase to your poison damage or a 100% increase to all the damage, okay? You want Double Dash. <laughs> you want Double Dash. I mean, don't fear the 40% uh, reduction to the range there, okay? That's what the first evolution is still going uh, is there for, sorry. It's still going to let us reach 12 meters, which is all you really need with this power, okay? Now, uh, for the Nightshade Blades, they haven't changed, okay, guys? These things are just as awesome as they've always been. Get damage, Poison Duration, and Exploding Blades uh, on this power, okay, guys? That's why I always recommend you build your uh, Nightshade Blades for maximum crowd control and death. Yeah, uh, no Biotic Focus, okay, guys? Um, I'll explain why I've made such a drastic change during the gameplay, I promise you, but I'll... Uh, I'll leave you guessing for now. Turian Veteran. Okay, this is a power build. Go for the damage and capacity and the power damage and then treat yourself to some of that lovely Turian Veteran damage and stability. Okay, guys, this is still going to give you a 27.5 weapon damage bonus. Okay, guys. And for the Venom Gauntlets, all health and shields. Okay, let's get nice and strong because we no longer have something that brings back our barriers. Okay, guys, get durability, shield recharge, and fitness expert. Okay, guys, that's going to give you 950 health and 1425 barriers. Pretty good stuff. Uh, the weapon, it's still the Wraith. I still think the Wraith is fantastic for this build, and I think if you try it yourself, you'll agree. Okay, stick this on, get the Smart Choke and the High Velocity Barrel on it. Okay, it's non-DLC. Yeah, I say this all the time, I'm going to make sure you all know it's non-DLC, so those extra weighted mods don't actually add any extra weight, okay? If it's um, only the DLC weapons actually are affected by those, okay? So yeah, you're still going to be poison striking as much as you need to be. For your equipment, a equipment, e equipment. Um, get on the incendiary rounds, okay, guys. Get your highest ones on. You want to be making sure you're getting plenty of fire explosions on the go with this build. So get your threes and fours on. Um, for your armor bonus, get the cyclonic modulator on, okay, guys. Like again, we have not got biotic focus, okay. Um, literally, our shields are the ones we go in with, okay. So make sure you've got a nice big ones on. Go with your cyclonics fours if you got them, threes if you haven't, okay. Nice big shields there. For your gear bonus, you want to have plenty of the nightshade blades, okay? This is how you're going to be able to make your approach on big mobs of enemies, okay guys? So make sure you've got plenty of them. Get on the grenade capacity, okay? Um, finally, for your weapon bonus, obviously yeah, I want a shotgun rail lamp, okay guys? I've only got shotgun rail lamp ones here to show you. This is usually the case I have with my equipment, but uh, I think I had uh, a three or a two for the gameplay. But uh, yeah, could be going in a bit stronger into the gameplay. All you need to know is get your stronger shotgun rail lamps on there for the most damage, okay guys? Let's jump in and take a look. So, a Cabal Vanguard without biotic focus. Let's see how this plays out. I'm joined by my subs Fresh Chrome 213, Explosive Pimp 4, or Explosive 54 if you're Welsh, and GT500 Mustangs. The ginger with flamerous vanguards will be igniting. However, unlike my fellow vanguards, there's no shield for me when I charge in. Which sounds crazy, but honestly, this is the first time the Cabal has made sense to me. The biggest problem with Poison Striking with Biotic Focus is that 
you can't. <laughs> if you use one ability, you can't use the other, as they both trigger a cooldown. It's not like Havoc Strike and Stim Packs, which you can easily put to affect light like biotic charge, because the gra- you know, sorry, because your grenade ammunition is tied down to your awesome Nightshade Blades instead. Perhaps if the Nightshade Blades worked exactly like Ballistic Blades, we'd have a more traditional Vanguard. Uh, but, you know, who needs more tradition in a game like this, when variety is the spice of life? Before there was such a thing as Biotic Charge, Vanguards were merely Biotic Soldiers, a description that fits the Cabal to a T. There are a lot of great ways to play the Cabal, and you know all of them have you frontlining with Biotics. However, this build is more fitting with ME3's mob of Vanguards, because it closes huge gaps between you and the Horde to deliver powerful damage. Of course, if you can't see yourself giving up Biotic Focus, which honestly I can appreciate, I'd recommend a, a good weapon or melee build instead. I mean... What you naturally want when frontlining is good defences, and Biotic Focus is certainly that. With no other cooldowns to worry about, it can be spanned for a constant 25% damage reduction and 10% movement speed bonus. You know, since the duration of the power greatly exceeds its recharge speed. Plus, every time you reset the clock on the power, you can regenerate 40% of your barriers and gain a half a second of invulnerability, which, with good timing, could be put to uh, effect against a, like a heavy attack. So you could just laugh off an Atlas missile if you wanted, for example. With all that going on, you can just stun and gun everything you charge down, sort of take a heavy hitter out with you, preferably something suited for close quarters, then just knock them back with the blades and take them out of your gun job done. You know, see, because the Cabal has um, amazing weapon bonuses. She can get a 37.5% increase to weapon damage in her passives and a 30% bonus to headshot damage, like the original Turians do. So, yes, the Cabal has better passives. Uh, sorry, she has a better passives tree than her Turian Havoc and his Armager brothers. Okay, Those guys with the jetpacks may look fly, but the Armager Legion doesn't contend with a Turian veteran. So, for the weapons build, just skip Poison Strike for full fitness, and then spec the blades, the same as I have them now. Then get damage and stability, power damage and damage ability in your passives, and spec Biotic Focus for damage taken, duration, and Biotic Shield, like I used to have it. I'd recommend a shotgun, SMG, or assault rifle, like the Raider, the Growl, Piranha, Riga, the Wraith, or the Venom. You've got the Hurricane, the Harrier, or the Lancer too. However, in saying that, there's a cool glitch with the Javelin. If you activate uh, Biotic Focus with the weapon in hand, it brings up the gun's innate thermal scope, so you can see enemies through smoke and walls by just having the power active, which essentially gives the Gabal a defensive hunter mode, and a good one too. See, uh, what you ought to know about the Javelin is, is it can see through as much cover as it can pierce, so if you stack up on those bonuses through mods and ammo, you can have the Gabal see all enemies over the, all over the map, and it's crazy. I think it works for the Alliance Infiltration Unit's Repair Matrix too. I uh, remember correctly. Of course, charging an enemy down with a javelin ain't smart. Uh, you'd be better off with the Gef Scanner, to be honest. And for once, I can actually say that gear would be more than just a gimmick on this character. Especially for a melee build of it. See, the heavy melee is pretty funky on this kit, and uh, it's pretty damaging too. A good melee build with the Cabal does damage on par with my Krogan Soldier, to be honest. You know, since I don't purge his fortification often enough to say it's really any higher. I mean, obviously, the Krogan has the edge in a fist fight because he has that extra 70% bonus when he wants it. However, I get on just fine without it. One swift backhand and a respectable bow, and the enemy drops to the floor. Uh, the only time I bother switching fortification on and then off and then back on again is when there's an appropriate lull in the action. So I can say with some confidence that a Cabal melee build works purely because of the damage. The melee attacks themselves more than make up for the damage they lack as well. A heavy melee, for instance, is like a zippy little shadow strike. In an instant, it teleports you directly behind the enemy you target, and you jump them like a vulture. I mean, it's not going to take you across the map, but the leap is really impressive. You should reach anything within mid-range of your character. This is honestly a great way to close the gap on the enemy, because you naturally evade a lot of damage you'd normally sustain in a typical frontal assault, and just like with the rest of her teleporting, you can pass through walls with it and really get the jump on someone. That's why the Geth scanner would be cool, so you can like, target an enemy through the wall. Um, and there's such a small recovery time on the heavy melee as well that you can follow it up with a regular melee um, well before the enemy knows what's happened. And just like with the Vorcha or the Fury, her light melees don't pause after the third hit. They go on forever. So it's very easy to take out enemies before they can even react to you. But you know me, I don't do sneaking around unless I have to. I say charge down a group, hit them with the nightshade blades, and then shred them while they're staggered or paralysed. Um, the melee builds much like the weapons build in that respect. Just spam biotic focus, stun with the blades, kill with the melee. However, that strategy ain't too sharp against boss targets, because uh, they aren't staggered so easily, so um, that either makes them too dangerous to attack or they're going to frequently interrupt you. 
Um, fortunately, though, uh, a melee build like this still nets you a fair amount of weapon uh, damage bonuses. As I said earlier, uh, the passive tree gives you a great bonus, and just having damage, uh, damage and stability at rank 4 and power damage at rank 5 adds 25% to your weapon damage. And specking your fitness for durability, martial artist, and melee synergy gives you another 25% with a heavy melee kill. So, you know, with a 50% weapon damage bonus, you're not much weaker than the soldier build, and the reason you're not even closer with that 6th rank of Turian veteran is because now you can get 3 ranks of poison strike as well, and then use the strategy I'm using now. But I'll get to that shortly. <laughs> Until then, just know to spec Nightshade Blades the same as always, and go for damage taken, melee damage, and heightened focus in Biotic Focus. Not only is that a 75% increase to melee damage, but it's a 45% damage reduction as well. Speaking from experience again, I can tell you I have no problem surviving on similar stats with my Turian Sentinel. Um, sure, he has overload for crowd control, but this chick can move, okay? Uh, the melee build's great in that respect. It really does take advantage of everything the Cabal can do. I'd run it myself if I honestly felt it could keep up with my other strategies for this game. However, the reason I, uh, the run, I run the build I have on show right now is because it isn't kind of awkward like the melee build is. I mean, as cool as the heavy melee is, it's also pretty wonky. You might remember in my original guide to the Cabal that um, it just slung me in front of a husk and got my face humped. <laughs> Plus, I really can't get an accurate reading on what its range is supposed to be. Uh, for no reason I can understand it. It can be drastically different at the worst possible time. <sighs> but um, with this power build, however, I know exactly what I'm dealing with. Um, I mean, the strategy I have for this build has more or less gone unchanged since I test over all those many months ago. I knew in the first week how effective it was to hit the enemy this way, but I've always kept tweaking the build because it never felt quite right. That's not to say there's any glaring issue with Poison Strike. It's no biotic charge, but that's only a problem if you don't realise that. And I don't get that mentality, frankly. Why would it be called something else if we have it already? And why would you want everything to function the same anyway? I mean, what would be the point in our selection then? Does anyone remember Mass Effect 3's ending? <laughs> um, I think it was Mustangs or Explosive uh, who thought it was odd that the Turians recognised their females as their own separate race. To which I explained that Cabal is just a title, <laughs> and I have no idea why she's listed as just the Cabal Vanguard. I mean, we have the Volus Protector Vanguard and the Batarian Brawler Vanguard. Hell, the same DLC brought us the... Geth Juggernaut Soldier and the Krogan Warlord Sentinel, but the Cabal is not the Turian Cabal Vanguard. <laughs> yeah, the naming of these characters is uh, riddled with inconsistencies. Still, uh, Poison Strike is something we haven't seen before, and it works differently to anything we have already. Poison Strike will not drop you on your enemy and have you all pumped up for a frontal assault. What it does instead is cut through an enemy line, or even a portion of the map, so you can outmaneuver your foe and rip them apart good hit and run stuff. I mean, while doing that last objective, Fresh called out this turret and top lab that I was able to fly in and take out from LZ while leaving a, a couple of phantoms behind. Poison Strike will let you do stuff like that reliably too, as long as you can ensure there is space for the manoeuvre. When you set up this power, you're given the range of it, and as long as the Cabal can physically stand at the end of this path, it will work every time. Um, and, you know, this is to stop you striking yourself off the map, basically. <laughs> um, but it can also be used to manipulate the power. Poison Strike doesn't uh, need a target to be used. You can go whenever, wherever you aim. So if you aim dead ahead, you should move straight in that direction onto the next piece of solid ground within at least 7 metres. I mean, if you aim too high or low, certain parts of the map are more likely to become an obstruction, most likely the floor. This will prevent you from moving the full length of Poison Strike or even at all. Uh, which is not bad if you're looking to make a smaller attack jump, but it's terrible if you fuck it up completely. So, you know, keep your head up or you'll end up stuck like I was on the ramp during the escort. <laughs> Same goes for a dodge, okay? It's awesome in that it almost instantaneously teleports you away, but if there's no room for you at the end of it, you don't move at all. Of course, what isn't clear with this power is how it connects with the enemy. You'd assume anything within the path you're moving would be hit. However, Poison Strike's area of effect doesn't take the shape of a line. It actually produces a traditional circular explosion that you just don't see. It has a radius of 2.5 meters and goes off 1 meter in front of you when you activate the power. It's more like biotic charge in this regard, except the impact is felt at the beginning of the move uh, rather than at the end. So, like biotic charge, it can only affect up to three targets as well. It does, however, ignore swarmers. <laughs> Every cloud, every cloud. Unlike Biotic Charge, though, okay, it 
only has 500 newtons of force, so it's not going to stagger anything higher up than a pyro, which is going to leave the phantoms and dragoons unchecked in this case. But that's where the nightshade blades come in, okay? Uh, these things are immense. They do a lot of damage and have a crazy air of effect. I'm sure that's what the range stat stands for with them. Uh, the initial strike seems capable of staggering everything, and with the explosive blades, uh, there's another 800 newtons in the next three seconds. Uh, these bad boys can also ragdoll a target and slows down all enemies by 30%. You know, if they're not completely paralysed already, which is the case if they're not protected. And, um, you know, the damage over time effect also stops enemies regenerating health and prevents cloaked enemies from staying hidden. So you couldn't ask for more crowd control, really. <laughs> yeah, they only hit up to three targets at a time, but two will usually deal with any mob you can find, which is simple enough to do since there's no cooldown on these things, because they're a grenade power. <laughs> which is ultimately why this build works better without biotic focus. Uh, there's no longer a power that prevents me using the other and throws the kit off its game. Um, you know, for all but the most tanky vanguards, and there aren't many, it is very important to stay mobile. This is the only way they can survive the high pressure situations they throw themselves into. A combination of keeping the enemy off their feet and staying light on yours is the only way to avoid the overwhelming damage you regularly face as a vanguard. Now, if it isn't obvious, a Cabal Vanguard without Biotic Focus is not one of the tanky ones. However, when, um, whenever you do use Biotic Focus, you lose your best way to move. Ultimately, you need to decide what your strategy is before you give up either. You can arm yourself uh, um, with the most powerful or efficient close quarter weapons and roll out like a high maintenance Batarian soldier, or you can even work the guns your mother gave you for, in my opinion, an even bumpier ride, okay? As I said before, the mini build makes use of everything the Cabal can do. However, with that, you get the same sort of hybrid style gameplay I've honestly suffered on this kit up until now. <laughs> Having everything on the go continuously fluctuates uh, the pace of the game, as your attacks switch from between swift and steady. There's also a pause in the character's movement every time the heavy melee is performed, which just stops the game from flowing. A build with just Poison Strike, however, always has you on the move, as there's really no opportunity to play it steady now. And, you know, rather than moving kind of awkwardly, or like something we already have, you're forced to move more like the Vanguards. Getting shot of biotic focus has simplified and streamlined this build into a much stronger package. I mean, the added shields, mobility and damage of this build now allow me to just be more efficient on the front line. <coughs> I mean, the extra 220, what is it, 225 shields from the 6th rank of Venom Gauntlets is an obvious bonus. This puts her overall health on par, um, yeah, on par with the likes of the Batarian Brawler. In fact, that this is going to be my first and only death because of those damn hand cannons. <laughs> but having uh, Poison Strike fully evolved just means better damage all round. Before, when it was only set for range at rank 4, it was capable of 1,356 damage in total. Now, with Poison Duration and Double Dash, it can do 3,410 damage before it triggers a cooldown. Double Dash does immediately bring the range down to 12 meters, as I said, and you could just have damage at rank 4 for the same, but still, with a single strike, you would only do 1,619 damage to the 1,705 you can do this way. Built like this, Poison Strike is actually capable of more damage than the Nightshade Frigging Blades. You know, ex ignoring the explosive damage, that is. But if that isn't a sign of good damage, I don't know what is. I mean, another bonus is having Poison Strike fully evolved. Uh, sorry, another bonus in um, is that having Poison Strike fully evolved also means you can detonate stronger power combos. With our incendiary rounds, we can create fire explosions for up to uh, 1,536 air of effect damage. Plus, since the power strikes twice now, two of those can be triggered before you got to cool off. Throw in the Nightshade Blade, and you'll be hard pressed to find a mob that can survive all that. They'll certainly be hard-pressed to keep up with it. Staggered or even paralysed by the blades, then panicked by incendiary rounds, don't need to be blown up with poison strike and again by the blades. If they can find their bearings through all that, they've got, they still got to find the time to turn around and face you again, by which time you, you shot them a second time and cut back through them, never looking at the explosion because, uh, the explosion because you're a cool guy. Having two turns of poison strike really advan uh, uh, it advances uh, what it can do to an enemy. I mean, you can put out a lot more damage at a much smaller cost to your ammunition, enabling you to just stay in the fight for longer. Before, I had to fire 
you know, both of my wraith shots before I could strike for the fire explosion and hit initially with nightshade blade so that there would be time to do so. Now I now I can get in the one initial hit with the blade, shoot to prime, strike to detonate, then shoot to prime another and then strike to detonate again, rinse and repeat. The weapon damage remains the same, but the power damage has gone up from one and a half times the damage of nightshade blade plus a fire explosion to two times the damage of nightshade blade plus two stronger fire explosions, and all at the co- at the same cost of ammunition. The Wraith is still aut- um, automatically re- reloaded by the second strike if it's done immediately after the last shot is fired as well. So, you know, it's all flowing and powerful, guys. Um, I mean, if the enemy managed to cheese their way out of that somehow, the Cabal's ability to move through obstructions um, can quickly get you out of any situation and behind solid cover. But honestly, as long as you have at least 12 metres on Poison Strike, you should be able to hit the enemy and end up far enough away to not get hit back. You know, um... <laughs> Just so you know that anything less is impractical, okay? You can have uh, 7.2 meters on poison strike, if you like, for even more damage, which will put you through a boss and then leave you in sink kill range. Uh, and, you know, but what you need to, guys, if the, if the mob spans too far back or if there isn't enough space for this tactic, you can just hold a position by emptying your clip and auto reloading with a nightshade blade instead. That's what I'm going to be doing for extraction mainly. Besides that, though, the only enemies you who should give you any um, issues for the tactic are Praetorians and Atlases. And this is only um, when you're fighting them alone, okay? They're, they honestly can't keep track of you when you've got the team there. This is simply because they cheat you. The Praetorians can fire their eye lasers out of their arse for some reason, and they have homing missiles when they're possessed, whereas the Atlas has a homing missile by default, and it can turn on a dime, unfortunately. Seriously, even if you strike through an Atlas a fraction before the missile is fired, that giant explosive container will ignore the trajectory it should follow from being fired from a cannon and immediately hit you behind the atlas meaning it either did a 180 and went through the fucking thing or flew a FTL space uh, no flew a FTL in space that didn't exist so you know fuck that attack but honestly you're better off with tactic B for blades against the atlas but you know repeating the attack sh- uh, string I just explained to you three and a half times for around what is that 44,666 damage we'll deal with it on gold then you can just walk away <laughs> That's bearing in mind you're using the Wraith, of course. You can still use any of the weapons or equipment I recommend in my original guide, and I'll, I'll put a link up for you now. Just remember, you're better off with general power bonuses as opposed to uh, biotic. All this uh, poison damage hits for, co- uh, hits for the combat category. Uh, I think it's only... No, I do know that only the impact damage of poison strike registers as biotic. Um, as any biotic damage will always either prime or detonate a biotic explosion, if you ever need a way to tell, guys. But, um, yeah, that's all the mystery solved for the Cabal Vanguard now. Please uh, comment, like, and subscribe if it was good for you. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Bunky, and I'm out.